So I wanted to share a quick way that I use to set up planets in the sky or maybe alien landscapes. You could even use this in a space kind of environment. So firstly, we're going to set up just a simple material using the textures from this website called Solar System Scope. So in this website, if you go to explore and textures, you can see there are different types of textures. There's Mercury, Venus, so there's fictional plants as well. So you can download these and use them as textures for our material. So I've already downloaded them. So in my basic template project, I'm going to make a new folder called planet. And in the planet folder, I'm going to make a new folder called textures and a new another folder called materials. I'm going to import the textures I've downloaded from Solar System Scope. I'm just going to bring in a few that I will use. So I'll just import these three now. So we're going to go to our materials folder, right click and create new material. And I'll name this new material Planet 01 Matte. And double click on the material and control space to bring up the contents browser and going to go to our texture folder and drag any texture that you want in here. So we're going to right click on the texture sample and convert to parameter. And we'll name this planet texture. On this side, we'll press P on the keyboard and left click for a panel node. This is not 100% necessary, but if you want to rotate your planet in the sky, you can do this with this panel. And you can preview this without connecting it to the actual material. So you can right click on the texture and enable preview. Go to, we can go to our panel and change the speed and you can see the planet is rotating as you change the speed value. We'll set that to zero because I don't want my planet spinning just yet and disable preview. And on this side, so we're going to hold M and left click for a multiply node and connect that to our texture. And we're going to hold S and left click for a parameter node. And we're going to name this glow crank. And we're going to make another multiply node and connect it to our other multiply node. So on this side, we're going to hold V and left click for a vector parameter. And we'll name this light direction. And we're going to right click and search for pixel normal. And we're going to right click and search for dot product and connect the two nodes like so to the dot product. And on this side, we'll hold L and left click for a loop and connect the dot product to loop. And we're going to hold S for a parameter node. And we'll name this planet shadow. And we'll connect this to the loop. And we're going to right click and search for clamp node and connect the loop to the clamp. We're going to hold S and left click for another parameter node and name this planet shadow lift and connect this to the min value for the clamp and connect the clamp node to the multiply node. Finally, select the material node and in the details panel, we're going to change the blend mode to masked and change the shading model to unlit. And now we can connect all our nodes to emissive color. You can see that the material is still black because I haven't set the glow crank um, value. So we can go to our glow crank node Set the default value to one. Hit apply and save. Back in our content browser in our materials folder. So we have our new material, but thing is we don't have a mesh that we can apply this to. So at the top of the editor, I'm going to go to modeling mode. If you don't have this icon up here, it means that you don't have the modeling plugin enabled. So make sure in the plugins, you enable the modeling editor mode. So I'll activate the modeling mode and click on the sphere. If you hover your mouse to your scene, you can see there's a sphere. I'm going to go to the dimensions and set the radius to about, let's say, 400 and the slices I'm going to set this to about 200 
Okay. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Alt number two for wireframe mode. That's a little bit too many slices. So I'll delete this and maybe 100 slices each. And you need to change the pivot location to centered. I actually forgot to do that on this one. Um, so we'll go back to our materials and create a material instance and apply the material instance to the sphere that we just created. Zoom all the way out till I can see the sphere. So I'll change the size to about 100,000 million. Let's go with one, two, three, four, five, six, six zeros. Okay, let's go with six zeros. So we can kind of see that's massive. You can't even see the landscape anymore. So we'll pull this to one direction. So I'll push that further out and go back into the default viewport and now you can see that, that we have a big invisible sphere floating in the sky way out in the distance you can kind of tell that's there but it's still kind of invisible so we'll go into the material instance that we applied to it and try changing the parameters you need to enable all the parameters in the light direction so this light direction works separately to the actual directional light that's in the scene so in the light direction parameter um, you can use the color picker to change the direction i haven't really figured out how to do this easily it's you need to sort of figure out direction that the shadows moves when you change the different values but once you get the hang of it it's not that hard so that's the direction of the light or rather direction of the shadow and once you've done that you can go to the planet shadow to increase or decrease the shadow in the direction that it's really set to and for the planet shadow lift um, I suggest you either have this at zero or have this at very small values. So as you can see at 0 0.005, you can kind of still see the shadow parts in the planet. You can see that's quite dark. So if you push the glow crank up, it makes it brighter. So this time I'll make another sphere in the modeling mode same settings i'll just change the pivot location to the center like i should have before so this just means i have the pivot location in the very center of the sphere so when i rotate it's um, it rotates properly so in our materials folder i'm going to duplicate the material that i've made and name this planet 2 mat and double click on the new material and in the planet texture i'm going to change this to another texture that i've imported let's go with uh, mars hit save so that's basically um another material with the same parameters so i will create a new material instance from the new material and we'll apply that to the new sphere so we have another planet and just to save us the hassle, I'm going to copy, right click and copy the location from the other sphere and paste and also copy the scale and paste. So we have another planet in the same location. So we'll push this back further from the other one and same kind of story with this one. So you can play around with the parameters to change the direction of the shadow and the darkness. Actually, I'll move this over here behind the other one and change the direction of the shadow. So it's kind of in line with the other one. And what you can also do, once you have the pivot point set properly, you can rotate the planet, which doesn't rotate the shadow. It, you can rotate the planet so the part of the surface that's showing is the part that you want it to show. I just want to show you one last thing with this material is that you bring in volumetric clouds. Uh, you can't really see the clouds because of the Rayleigh scale in the um, sky atmosphere at the moment. But if I disable sky atmosphere, here you can see just the clouds. And you can see the clouds cover the planet. The planets are further away than the clouds, which makes sense. 
So hopefully you found this guide helpful. If you want to know how I create uh, template projects for cinematic rendering, check out my other video um, talking about it. Maybe leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching.